Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRamAnchor.com here, and today I've got a quick tips video on a bunch of updates Garmin has just released into beta for the 400 245, 745, and 945 watches. And by the way, funny trivia for you here, uh, it is exactly two years of the day, tomorrow, uh, that the 400 45, 245, and 945 were released. Okay, now as I alluded to, this is a beta update, which means it will not automatically show up on your watch. You need to go ahead and take yourself a computer, connect it to your watch using a cable. Uh, this is my favorite like charging cable for Garmin devices there we go right there uh, and it allows you to go ahead and put it on there and have it be securely attached to this without flopping around and falling off it's like nine bucks for a two pack it's great video in the corner once you've done that you copy the files over i'll link to all that stuff down on the bottom there it's super easy if you can copy and paste a file you can copy and paste the firmware update lots of people do it uh, and then you're off to the races with that all set, let's talk about the new features. So they vary a little bit depending on which watch you're on. Uh, we'll start off with the 245 here, and you see the new suggested workouts. Uh, so the way this works is that when you go into a uh, running workout now, you can go down here, you can hold this in, uh, and go to training, uh, workouts, today's suggestion, and it'll show you a suggested workout for that day. Uh, now, since I already did this once, uh, normally it would actually just show you the second you tap the run button, uh, but in this case, you have to go down a little bit further to see that. Uh, so you can see it's suggesting an 8.45 a mile workout for 49 minutes. Uh, show you why it's suggesting that workout, uh, and you go down further, and you can see the training effect, uh, and up here, you can then choose to do the workout, you can see the steps, the target type, and so on. This is already on the 7.45 and the 9.45, so it's just the 2.45 getting that. Oh, hey, and if you're finding this video interesting or useful, consider subscribing because there's a good chance, an 86.1% chance, that, that you're not subscribed. Just saying, that's what the, the stats say. So consider hitting that subscription button or hitting the like button if all else fails. The next thing that is not on the 245, though, is the advanced sleep metrics. Uh, that's something that came to the Phoenix 6 all the way last summer, uh, then the Enduro, and then the Venue 2 recently, and now finally the 745 and the 945. I don't know if the 245 is getting it. I suspect so, but not really sure. It's not in this particular beta update. So to access that, go on down here, and you see sleep. Uh, not great sleep. Uh, actually, it was good sleep. I was just up really, really late trying to get some stuff done. Uh, so I can tap this open right there, and you see my sleep score is 62. Not awesome, but you know what? If you open this up, it actually agrees with me. I had good sleep. I just didn't have a lot of it. And said so I went to bed too late, uh, and I should probably stick to a schedule, and yeah, shut up. Moving on down here, you see my sleep uh, time frame, so 2.35 a.m. to 7.34 a.m. Uh, and then again, you can see the sleep phases, uh, as well as kind of the breakout of those particular phases. Uh, so then this gets to the next feature, which is on both of these watches. Actually, it's on all three watches, despite this one not having the advanced sleep tracking uh, user interface at this point, uh, which is the body battery update. So if we go down to body battery here, way down, uh, you can see that right there. This is like Street Fighter style energy. Uh, so you get more energy as you sleep or rest or even watch TV, and you lose that energy when you do things like working out or a stressful whatever. Um, and you can see that over the course of the day, I find it a pretty good proxy. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Uh, the problem was in the past, you could top out 100% uh, at night relatively easily uh, with relatively poor sleep uh, versus now it's much, much more difficult to get that uh, to top out near or even at 100. Um, in fact, I've seen this over the last three to four weeks with the Venue 2 firmware. Uh, it's almost impossible for me to get to 100 these days uh, because I have the sleep that you just saw. Um, but you can see here last night only topped out in the mid 50s uh, versus it would have been probably a fair bit higher on a normal day. Then we have two different uh, trail running updates. The first one is on all these, which is that there's a VO2 max disablement option for trail running. So if I go down to trail run uh, here on the 245 and then go into settings, trail run settings again, and go all the way down, you will see an option right there, record VO2 max. Normally this is on, I turned it off just a few minutes ago, uh, but what this does is it goes ahead and basically tells the watch to ignore calculating VO2 max on the trail running profile. And the reason you might want to do that is if you've got a heavy backpack or something else that you're carrying a lot of weight with you, uh, you don't want that to skew your VO2 max downwards because your heart rate will be higher as you're going up, you know, a big hill or something like that or a mountain. Uh, and so this tells it to not calculate VO2 max across the board. Uh, and you can see that right there. And you will not receive the performance condition notifications as well. So it's basically saying, we know you're going to be working harder because you got more weight with you, uh, therefore you might want to turn this off. People have also been using this for running with a stroller with kids uh, because, again, that can impact uh, their VO2 max estimates. So that's an option there for you. Uh, that's now on all these. And then also on the 945 and 745, you have the new Ultra Run profile. Uh, so to access that, you're going to need to go into Sport Modes, 
Uh, and you need to go down to the bottom here not to add it if you haven't already. Uh, you can see in this case that I've got it already added. Uh, so it's ultra run right there, be on here as well. And this allows you to then customize the ultra run settings. You can see there that's today's suggested workout. Uh, so almost identical to this one over here, slightly different, but that's fine. And ultra run settings, I still have that same VO2 max option at the bottom as well. The main reason why you'd want to use the ultra trail running mode is it has rest timers in it. So if I go and just start this right here, uh, and then I press the lap button, what you'll see is that it's going to go into kind of an aid station mode. Or basically it's going to tell me how much time I've spent at that particular aid station. So as soon as this clears out of the way, there we go. You can see the rest timer there, uh, my total timer. This allows you to then track how much time you're actually spending uh, on the trail versus how much time you're spending at rest uh, without having to stop the watch altogether and then forget later on to start it. You can customize exactly what happens when you press that lap button. Uh, so you go to ultra run settings and you go all the way down to lap button. Let's see, there we go, lap key. Uh, and then you see the option for lap like normal, like it used to be, lap plus rest or rest only. Uh, and then all the data is fed into Garmin Connect and you can see that afterwards on the site there itself. Um, how However, while we're here, I'll mention the next one, which is the self-evaluation. Uh, so if we go back up a little bit, you'll see right there this thing called self-evaluation. What this basically means is at the end of the workout, you can get two screens that I'll show you in a second uh, that allow you to rate your workout. Uh, so here, the default option is workouts only, meaning only structured workouts, where you're following like a structured workout uh, from the watch itself, or you can toggle it to always. So if we go like that and go all the way back, uh, and I'm just going to do an ultra run, sure, press start, I'm going to wait two. Yeah, that's good. Um, and there we go. And now I've finished my workout. Uh, at this point, I can go ahead and save it. And you'll see it says rate the perceived effort. No live track. Thank you for catching up there. Um, so perceived effort, got the colors in there. Uh, and you can see as I go through this, the colors change all the way up to hard, very hard, extremely hard. I'm going to say that that two seconds was a, a solid, eh, solid, extremely hard. Um, how do I feel? Middle smiley, strong, very strong, definitely strong. I, I nailed that. Um, and that's it. And then from here, you'll see this on Garmin Connect, on Garmin Connect Mobile, on the workout pages there. Right now, though, it does not seem to enumerate on like training peaks in their same sort of scales that they have there. Hopefully that happens. It's recorded to the fit file. It should be trivial for training peaks and other training platforms to pull that data into it. Uh, so hopefully we'll see that on the road. This is actually super useful for coaches. So if you were to talk to coaches that are a bunch of athletes that upload workouts to them, uh, it's either all or nothing, either feast or famine in terms of the information they get from the athletes after the workout. Uh, for some athletes, it's the file automatically syncs to their training peaks or whatever account, final surge, today's plan, fill in the blank. Uh, and that's the only thing, the only context the coach has. Uh, and other athletes, they're going to write like five paragraphs on how that run went or that ride went. Uh, so this is sort of that middle ground of before you can um, do anything else, after you press that save button, it'll go ahead and ask you, you know, how it felt and what your effort was there. And then that would theoretically get transmitted to a coach uh, where they could see that and at least have some context more than just just the raw data itself. Okay, there you go. A quick look at these new features. If you found this video interesting, whack that like button at the bottom there, or consider subscribing and joining the 13.9% of you that are indeed subscribed. With that, have a good one. Keep thinking that I could have done something, but now I'm left with an empty heart. No making a mess.